Hi, I'm Simon Mannering, author of the New York Times bestseller We First and founder of the social branding firm We First. This is a really challenging time for business because mobile gaming and social technologies are not only changing the way you must do business, they're changing your customers, your consumers, because they've got media in their own hands now. And if I had to describe the shift simply, it's that the polarity, the direction of conversation between brands and consumers has reversed. In the past with traditional media, you know, you broadcast through a television, radio, print ad about your brand to the customer and then the customer would respond, they'd buy your product or service. But now, because customers are telling brands what they want, the polarity of the conversation is reversed. You need to lead with listening and respond to what your customers want. And so one of the greatest challenges for brands out there is to not treat social media and these new social technologies the same way as they treated traditional media. So let's talk about these eight technology trends that are reshaping the marketplace in which you're operating. The first is the web of the future is being built around people. What do I mean by that? I mean that for a long time if you wanted to find something, a holiday destination, a restaurant, something to buy, you would enter it in Google and search all the information available and hopefully that company would be on the first landing page and, and you'd go ahead and do that. But now, thanks to social media, we have all volunteered so much information about ourselves through all the different channels and our photos and what music we like and what holiday destinations we enjoy. And because there's so much competition for our time and attention, that people don't have time to surf through all these different options to find something. They just want the answer easily. And so what's happening is companies are sending people information based on the filter of what they've said they already like. Summer vacations, a certain brand of product. And so what you're finding is the web is increasingly being built around what your customer is telling you they are like or what they like to buy or where they like to go instead of doing a general search. Secondarily, the new social technologies out there are being adopted and adapted by consumers even before they get to brands. I know personally that the case used to be that when some new technology would come out, it would go to the company that acquired that technology, they would build products and services out, they would launch it to market, and then the consumer would respond. That's gone now. Entrepreneurs are launching technology out into the marketplace, even in beta form, where they're trying it out. Consumers use it in ways that they didn't even imagine themselves. So even then, the designers have to adjust as to the, the technology they made. But beyond that, brands are playing catch up in two senses, because they have to catch up to the technology that's already gone to customers, and they have to integrate the new ways that customers are using it. So consumers are sort of adopting and adapting technology even before brands get their hands on it. Thirdly, these same consumers, because of all the information they're sharing about themselves, expect real-time, seamless, and personalized service. Because if they're telling you on these social channels what they like, what music they like to listen to, what they were happy about or not happy about with a product, and you're not listening, well, why should they support your brand? Why shouldn't they go to someone else who is sort of yelling through different channels just as loudly? So they expect personalized service. And also the amount of information these consumers are sharing and can consume is increasing exponentially every day. This whole trend of auto-publishing, which allows you to share photographs through Instagram or share videos through YouTube or whatever it might be, means the amount of information out there that is competing for your customer's attention is increasing day by day and hour by hour, which makes it harder for you to command their attention. And at the same time, the competition for community and consumer attention is equally rising in the sense that it used to be that you could buy a print ad in a magazine and you'd know by the virtue of the audience of that magazine that you would command a certain amount of attention. But now, People are looking across all different media channels for the very same subject matter. And everybody's pouring their content into that same media channel. So that it's very hard not only to capture the attention of somebody in the first place, it's very, very hard to keep it over the long term because they may be distracted by the latest banner ad, the latest Facebook ad, or just some YouTube video that was sent to them on their mobile phone by somebody else. 
And then, you know, the staggering proposition that sort of wraps around all of this is that all these photographs, all this information, all this new content goes with everyone everywhere through their smartphone. This wasn't the case before. You need, used to be landlocked to your personal computer or in the same way that you used to have to go and use a telephone that was tied to a wall. But now everybody has everything they need and all their relationships and all their photograph and all the input in their lives with them at all times in their smartphones. And that is an absolutely fundamental change because if their lives exist in their hands, in their pocket, and you're not operating effectively in that space, you're just not relevant to their lives. They're just not going to look to you for a product or service, which is why the mobile space is so incredibly important. And as a result of this, I guess I could sum it up by saying the seventh trend is that companies will be distinguished by the quality of their listening. They're going to be distinguished by how well they're attuned to what their customers, their demographic are saying out there across their various social channels. And that's why there's all these tools out there that allow you to listen, whether it's Google Alerts, which will give you an alert every time someone mentions your brand, whether it's TweetDeck or Hootsuite, which allows you to moderate and monitor your social channels, multiple social channels at any one time, or whether there's sophisticated social listening tools like Sysimus or Radiant 6, which allow you to do it at an enterprise level. The success of your company will be determined by the quality of your listening, not the quality of your speaking, the quality of your listening. And then finally, the eighth trend would be that citizen and consumer activism is on the rise. Customers, especially since 2008, have been very aware of a lot of questionable business practices out there. And since then, there's been this mass adoption of these media channels which have given them a voice. And at the same time, they've looked around the world and seen citizens use these channels to drive political change. And as a result, they're starting to demand similar changes from the brands they support. And so it's not just a case of listening well and embracing new technologies. You have to be prepared for your social license, your license to operate as a company, to be challenged if you're not authentic, transparent and accountable for your behavior. And this consumer activism is not going away. And I'll be talking a lot about that in the next training video. So we have these eight different trends that are reshaping the marketplace and taken together they give you a snapshot of all the different dynamics that are changing your business and that sometimes get very confusing because you can't see your way through them because they're coming at you all at once. Now I want to go on to the three key strategic principles that you can apply to sort of navigate this new landscape as defined by those eight different trends. And the first is the future of profit is purpose. And I mean this in many senses. The future of profit is purpose because when you are forced to define your purpose as a company, from a strategic point of view, it delivers so many efficiencies because you learn who you are, what you stand for, what your core values are, and then you can communicate those to your employees and your employees suddenly feel better about working there. Their productivity rises and you, know, you retain them over a longer period of time. But perhaps most importantly, the future profit is purpose is because these very same consumers I was just talking about want you to be more meaningful to, your, to their lives. They want you to be more responsible. They want you to provide part of the solution for the world becoming a better place. And so by defining your purpose and reaching out to them in ways that are meaningful to their lives, you will inspire customer loyalty, goodwill and sales, which will drive your profit. Secondly, in order to do that effectively, your brand must shift the way it approaches marketing. For a long time, brands would sit there and see themselves as a celebrity of their customer community. It would be like, come into my store and buy my clothing, or go to my website that you're, as a destination, as a hub for all activity. But that's not how it works anymore. As you probably found, there's always traffic issues to a brand's destination website. That's because your customers are out there surfing social channels and because the conversation is migrating from one channel to another. It's constantly in flow. So how do you handle that? Well, there's a fundamental shift that changes everything. And that shift is you need to shift from being the celebrity of your community 
to its chief celebrant. Instead of trying to draw people and draw attention to yourself, you need to celebrate your customers out there in terms of what's meaningful to their lives. So if you simply change that idea in your head and approach every bit of marketing and communication from the point of view of how can I celebrate my customers when they engage or purchase our products and services, then these social channels and dynamics will work for you because when the brand celebrates the customer, they'll want to talk about that, they'll be motivated to talk about that across their own social channels. And then finally, perhaps the largest context in terms of strategy for this new landscape is that the evolution of revolution is contribution. And that sounds counterintuitive. For a long time, it was dog eat dog. You know, your success always comes at somebody else's expense. And that was reinforced with sort of sometimes, you know, keeping up with the Joneses and living the American dream and, and getting ahead at what any, you know, at any cost. But really, the evolution of revolution is contribution turns that on its head. Because what everybody's experience of life is so acute now. And everyone is so well informed through the internet and social media of the really difficult situation that we're in economically here in the United States and around the world that they want you to make a difference. So if you want to revolutionize your industry, if you want to revolutionize your product category, if you want to revolutionize business and marketing outright, it comes in terms of making a contribution that sets you apart from your competitors and is meaningful to your customers. So the evolution of revolution is contribution is the third key strategic principle. So now I want to talk about the six engagement strategies you can use that underpin these three strategic principles for you to succeed in this new social business landscape. And the first is you need to embrace a broader definition of sustainability for your business that is moral, ethical, social, economic and environmental. Why? because your customer wants you to be meaningful to their lives. So let's look at some concrete examples by the smartest marketers in the world. Think about it for a second. You've got Coca-Cola, open happiness. Pepsi, refresh everything. IBM, smarter planet. Patagonia, don't buy this jacket. Starbucks, shared planet. Every single one of these brands are taking those three principles I just talked about, of being the celebrant, rather than the celebrity, of using purpose for profit, of making a contribution to be revolutionary, and using those principles to embrace this broader definition of sustainability, which is what the company does is more responsible in terms of the well-being of the world at large. Why? Because that's the dynamics driving the marketplace today. Why? Because consumers are so well informed from the internet and from social media that there are social crises everywhere that need addressing. And so they're asking the private sector to play a role. And that's why the big brands are responding. So if we look at the second key engagement strategy, it's to establish this emotional connection on the basis of shared values and a common purpose. For example, Nike, better world. Nike has committed itself through using you know, recycled materials for its products, through opening up its IP through the Nike Green Exchange and the environmental um, design tool, opening up its IP to its competitors to address climate change. Basically, Nike is saying, we care about what you care about, which is climate change and having a sustainable planet. And so we're going to serve a common goal together. And that establishes their leadership in an intimately connected global marketplace. So this is very smart marketing in terms of the global community we now find ourselves in the context of what's driving consumer engagement today. And then if we look at the third engagement strategy, we should co-create strategies and marketing and advertising and products and services with our customers. And the examples of this are legion. McDonald's has just crowdsourced its first hamburger, which is now available in stores in Europe. Mountain Dew crowdsourced three new flavors of its drinks. Companies every single day are out there asking people, what would they like to see? What product do they want? What is missing? They're crowdfunding different projects, whether you're a musician or an artist. Basically, people are reaching out to their customer community and saying, we're in this together. What can we do together here? Why? Because by doing that, the customer is already invested in the result before the marketing's even begun. For example, Levi's used Facebook 
to crowdsource the face of the guy and girl for their new campaign. And everyone engaged on Facebook as to which guy and girl they thought was most appropriate. So they feel like they had a part to play in that decision, so they were already invested in the marketing when it went out across all different media channels. And then the fourth engagement strategy you have to embrace is that you have to adopt a long-term relationship goal rather than a short-term profit-driven goal. And this is not simple. Everyone knows that companies are beholden to their shareholders. And everyone knows that executives are largely re rewarded on the basis of meeting analyst projections in the next quarter and they get stock options awarded on that basis. So these things compete with taking a long-term view on things. But your customer wants to know that you're interested in them for the long term. And that loyalty translates to profit over the long term thanks to social media if you support them. And so as difficult as it is, you need to look at your brand and say, how can we genuinely be interested in our customer over the long term and genuinely serve their well-being rather than just getting transactional about it and saying, listen, I just want to get some money out of you now and then I'm going on to the next person. And then when we go to the fifth key engagement strategy, this is one part that a lot of companies overlook. When they do reach out across social media channels, whether it's Facebook, Twitter, or whatever it might be, they engage them for a while, and then the campaign stops. And what they're doing is they're applying the old traditional media mindset to the new social media dynamic, in the sense that there's a finite period, in the same way you buy a television advertising sort of campaign for a certain period of time. But what they're not realizing is that you need to invest for the long term, because social media doesn't turn off. Everyone is there 24-7, in which case you need to engage with them in real time over the long term. Otherwise, the customer will just see you as using them as a pawn in their game. And also, you'll find yourself constantly having to rebuild this sandcastle at the foot of waves as you get one group of you know, uh, customers and then they disappear. Then you get another group of customers and then they disappear. But to avoid that, the key thing you need to do is to upgrade their engagement once you've got them and reward, reward them for doing so. So what I mean by that is, if you do engage them around a competition, around a poll, around a blog post, whatever it may be, once you have captured their attention, upgrade them, give them something else to do, and then reward them for that participation whether it's an e-coupon sent to their phone, whether it's a recognition through a sort of social badge on one of the channels, whether it's like ex exclusive access to certain content that other people can't see. But you reward that engagement so that you don't have to constantly keep rebuilding that same community engagement. And then finally, you have to communicate success stories so that they understand that what they're involved in is worth their time and engagement. So what you need to do is create ways for you to partner, to co-create different marketing strategies and commitments that will help fulfill a vision for the world that they want, that the brand shares, and then over time show them success stories of where it's worked out. If you're supporting the drilling of wells in Africa, show them the success stories. If you're supporting children's education, show them the success stories. So really see your customers as sort of collaborators and co-inspirators in social change that they want to see in the world and by working together they will want to see your brand succeed and by doing that you will succeed together both in terms of your bottom line and profit but also in terms of bringing about the change you want to see in the world. So I really hope that was useful and I promise you this if you embrace these eight technology trends if you accept these three strategic principles for how you approach this new marketplace. And if you engage these six different engagement tactics to win over your customer's attention, social media will become your amplifier. Your customers will become your brand ambassadors. And what is an otherwise threatening marketplace will become a really dynamic and profitable space in which you can set yourself apart from your competitors.